the autumnal equinox and uh, this will be a long video so grab yourself i have to talk about today so <laughs> it's a long video so have a cup of tea or something so it's the autumnal equinox uh, people have been sending me mabon greetings but i don't celebrate mabon mabon is a made up new age thing and I, there's not a lot of uh, evidence that our ancestors celebrate the autumnal equinox with any particular festivities for a couple of reasons they may get a halloween coming up soon soon and also um autumn is is less like spring it's it's not as dramatic in terms of how quickly it comes in and they're they would have been very busy this time of year doing stuff and so i don't think there was an autumnal equinox festivals and not that i could find in pagan times anyway in our ancestors and not even in like you know early christianity but it definitely was coming towards the end of october so that that's probably that, that's the festival mabon is just a made-up thing that uh new ages or wiccans and stuff do but anyway thank you anyway those who sent that message to me but it's just your autumnal equinox anyway and i, I don't like anything that takes the the heat off selling because selling is, is extremely important in terms of as a as you know the premier pagan the, the premier pagan festival of the indo-european people anyway and celtic people so a lot has happened since the last video a lot has happened a lot's gone down so you know it's it's interesting it's uh i had a very bad day yesterday i have to say i had a very very bad day yesterday and uh it just seemed like i was looking at the videos of what was happening in melbourne and it was just upset me to see what men have to do in order to justify their work so the builders, the construction workers of Melbourne, were told by that lunatic Andrews, and he is, he's a, he's a, he's, a, he's a, that guy is an obnoxious little cretin. He's like, he reminds me of those asshole school teachers, you know, that like, tough, that think they're God, has no real life experience, but just sits there spewing and enforcing protocol for no reason that it is protocol. And he makes, he makes me sick, that guy. And uh, if anyone was going to, rise up you see because the arts are dead more or less what ult ultimately what are builders whether they're laborers or carpenters or plumbers or you know fabricators or steel workers roofers anything plumber what are builders builders are creators they're one of the few things in this day and age in terms of employment along with things like bakers in terms of the actual field of work outside the arts as such, the, main, the mainstream arts as such, that is an element of creativity, and that is creativity, are builders and construction workers. They are artisans. And that's why I, I hold them in very high regard. I always have. Even the laborers, that requires a lot of skill. Having worked on building sites myself, both as a, mostly as a laborer, but like one time as an apprentice carpenter joiner for a while, I had tremen developed tremendous respect for builders and construction workers. They are creators. They are creating something from nothing. They're, bri they're you know, the architect may be great at doing all the drawings, have again, producing a set of drawings, the project managers and civil engineers may be very good and quantity surveyors at you know quantifying the materials needed and so on but ultimately when a building takes place whether it's a house a motorway a railway line a, a skyscraper it's the creativity of the builder that has brought that into manifestation now when you take your work away from a builder or a construction worker You've not only taken away the livelihood, but because like bureaucratic low life animals like Andrews don't understand what it's like to be a man, they've taken away the man's right to create. And that's why the builders and the construction workers were out on the streets of Melbourne first before anyone else. Uh, because they not only took away their right to earn a living, but they also took away their right to create. 
And because bureaucrats and politicians and civil servants create nothing, TV people, media journalists create nothing. Uh, they just bureaucrats, middlemen, middle management create nothing. Social justice warriors, lefties, activists create nothing. So when you, they don't understand what it's like to create something, the power of creativity and one of the last sections, the last sectors and a, and a sector that will always be there. That's what I always tell you kids encourage them to go to trade school or tech builders. Although, you know, you have the nerds in Silicon Valley want to have 3D printed buildings to put them out of business, but they'll always be, they'll always be work for people involved in trades builders. And it didn't surprise me at all. They were the ones who finally took to the streets. And it's beautiful to see. It's beautiful. And a woman, a friend of mine, a Facebook friend of mine, although I'm bad at Facebook, I still read, she wrote something very funny like, uh, it was wonderful being in Melbourne yesterday in a sea of toxic masculinity. You see, that's what they declare toxic masculinity. The, the enemy of the bureaucrat, the enemy of the activist, the enemy of the left-wing socialist activist, the enemy of the bureaucrat, of the middle management, of the civil servant, of the, the dogmatist, has always been the builder, the, the construction worker, because uh, they, ca they hate them. And they hate males. They hate working class males. That's why they took away all our factories in the West and set up in China. They don't. They want. They have been de determined to destroy the working class male. This is why they've been declared to having toxic masculinity. As toxic masculinity is purely the the right to be a man. That's all it is. As was declared toxic masculinity, and uh, and that's why they, they they're destroying manhood. Now, I can guarantee you that more fellas got laid last night in Melbourne than just about any time in recent history. Because the women in Melbourne would have been so turned on by all this testosterone, this like this miasma of testosterone that was floating over the city yesterday. They would have been so horny. If you didn't get, if you were a fella in, in, in Melbourne last night and you didn't get laid, then you're probably a woman. You're probably a, a, big, a big fucking girl, okay? Uh, because those women would have been, the women in Melbourne would have been so horny for a man last night. And this is what really terrifies the soy boy bureaucrat tech head nerds. Because they don't want women discovering what real man, manhood is again. So there would have been so many women got laid in Melbourne last night. It would have been amazing. And uh, they would have been just so hungry for like, t t man, you know, give me man, mate. You know, <laughs> baby, uh, that's what it would have been like. Give me a man, give me a man. Oh, go get a man, go get some dick. Uh, it would have been like that, and it is a beautiful thing. It would have been like uh, a liberalia or a saturnalia in ancient pagan times. It would have been beautiful, fucking beautiful. And uh, that's because women would have got a, the, the, the women of Melbourne would have had the testosterone wafting over the air, and all oh, they give me dick. I. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that I would have gotten good and good luck to those girls too and uh, beautiful and so all the, the activists and the soy boys you know it would have been a bad night for an IPA sipping hipster woke hipster you know but a bad night for them it would have been a bad night uh, ch chances that nine times out of ten his his girl his woman is uh, that he doesn't oppress and he, he respects was probably shagging some some electrician down the road or something like like that last night, and this is why they've always hated the the toxic. This is what toxic masculinity is. They don't want traditional men, and we saw when well, traditional men come back, it rattles in the foundation. The thing in Melbourne is the the real enemy there that the the builders need to take care of is the union leaders because they were they show the true colors. Now union leaders are scum in every country. They're all globalists who are working with the establishment. And they've been a huge part of the destruction of the working class as well. And uh, so that, that, that not only should it be removed from the decisions in the union, but they should take far more severe. I, they should really go into hiding and be afraid for the rest of their lives. They really should. Those, those the union leaders in Melbourne, they really should go into like safe houses for the rest of their lives. That's how that's that's how what scum they are. Dropping the mandate wasn't enough. That wasn't enough. You know, the union is supposed to protect their workers, not throw them to the mercy of the Bill Gates and the globalists. And uh, so 
you know, like it, it, it's it's amazing to watch, and it it was a good thing. And then something incredible happened. There was a a massive, a major earthquake, a big, good sized earthquake. I mean, hit Melbourne for the first time in decades. Now, what that was was catalytic exteriorization phenomena. Everybody in the world, people like us. Who have been waiting please someone somewhere put an end to this madness someone stand up and say enough that emperor's new clothes moment when it finally happened in melbourne yesterday there was a huge explosion of catalytic exteriorization psychic energy towards melbourne it was think of in terms of a psychic rock being thrown by everyone around the world who were looking at the workers in melbourne and going Thank you, finally. See, Ireland being a nation of cowards and soft boys, and you have groups like the Yellow Vests here, whose job is to basically wear the Yellow Vest coward, make them turn you into a coward. And if you, the last Yellow Vest parade in March in Dublin was, it was the most pathetic of all, the police leading it. I mean, come on. This is what, that, you know. <laughs> what? Do what the government says. Stand there. Do what the government says. No, go down to the police. I guess the next, the next I guess the next, a suggestion for the next yellow vest uh, demonstration in Dublin was be to bring flowers and chocolates down to government buildings and give them to the politicians because you're one step away from that. Also, the Irish, being a nation of cowards, are also been trained over the decades to call their politicians uh, by their first names as they're our mates, our friends, so we can't hate them. And I, well, I saw some, all the placards I saw in. In Melbourne, all said things like "fuck you, Andrews." Where here in Ireland, they'd be like, uh, "Give us a break, Dan." See, the Irish, the Irish have been such a quizzling race of maggots who worship their oppressors by calling them by their first names. That's what I'm saying. Like, as soon as I see somebody comes up to me and goes, "Did you see what Leo did?" Get out of my fucking sight! Just get out of my sight! You slave! You maggot! You slave! Did you see what Mihal did? Get out of my fucking sight! The first and primal revolutionary act, well, I don't say revolutionary, insurgency act that any Irish person can make is to immediately stop calling politicians by their first fucking names. It's still going on. I'm totally disgusted at the government. How dare Joan do this? You fucking dickhead. Mary did this, the bitch. Stupid fucks. I'm, I'm really so down on my people, it's not funny. But um, so something else, okay. That's 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 the beginning, okay. So that's what what happened in Melbourne yesterday was wonderful, wonderful, and um, long may it continue. Uh, the government obviously bought because there's you know the Sal used to having uh, Dave Cung did a fantastic video about Dan. His dad says this, dad's is dead. You know, and uh, you better do this right, right? Uh, you better fucking do it. You better get it. Take your vaccine. Go home. Right. This kind of fucking thing. And uh, like a school teacher. I bet he's shitting bricks this morning. I bet he's shitting bricks this morning. What? What? It's that? You're not taking the nail grave? No. What? What the boss? I'm Dan. You know, Dan, if you lived in Ireland, you would be worshipped as a god. But because... Australians are a far more intelligent and sophisticated peoples than the mo the rosary bead morning Irish. Uh, you're probably in the born in the wrong country if you've chosen the wrong dharma to follow. But uh, if you were here in Ireland, they'd worship you like God. They'd be throwing scattering petal petals at your feet. That's what we do here. We 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 worship our oppressors. Nothing makes an Irish person happier than to love the politician who's treating them like shit. And um, they, they, they absolutely. That's why they give them parades of venerate. That's why they have yellow vest parades who go down and venerate them. You see, when they were outside the the national convention center having a party fun time as their civil rights were being taken away, they were going. They were venerate. They were showing their love for Irish politicians in the glass house, all waving down at them. They were showing their love for them. Bongos, dancing, yeah. lots of weed, yeah. You fucking maggots. You fucking worthless fucking maggots, you Irish. You've really shown yourselves for what you are. Pathetic. And as you'll always be calling them by their first names for the rest of your life. Look at what's happening in Melbourne and hold your fucking head in shame. Hold your head in shame. Because that should have happened here. 
but it didn't because you've all these decades of calling your politicians by their first names and all being infantilized by like things like the late late toy show growing adults sitting down watching like some little shit from fucking pally farmer telling a stupid joke ah he lovely no he's a little cunt and this kind of thing nah uh infantilism all the way all the way but uh, it's like that got the irish got what they deserved so in other news outside of melbourne Uh, outside of Melbourne, uh, the United States, the United States has uh, made it reduced. When you hear this one for gaslighting, so Biden's administration has reduced. Oh, there's a little kitten trying to get into the car engine. It's he's a he's a feral one. He goes into the fucking engine. He goes into the fucking engine to keep, and I don't like it. But uh, what was I going to say? Yeah, Joe Biden. Joe Joe Biden uh, said it's okay now to come visit the United States. Everyone's welcome. All the travel restrictions are gone, except you have to be vaccinated fully. So you know, but here's an interesting thing: it's by air travel only. So you have millions upon millions of people flowing across the Mexican border who probably have contagious diseases and viruses far more deadly than COVID-19 flooding into the United States. Now, that's not there on the putting these people down there in dire straits. I feel bad for those immigrants that they're actually reduced to having to live like that. But um, they're flooding. They're, no, there's, no, there's no double vaccination for them. No, they go straight into the United States, carrying all kinds of diseases that they bring from the third world. And that's no problem, because uh, as I said, the, Az the Aztec sun gods have taken over the United States establishment, and so you get your vaccine. And, you know they're all dying on planes of thrombosis. So you get you get you get, you get your double needle craft, and you get into the airplane, and you fly up towards the sun, and then the the blood clots and the double thrombosis comes in, and you you're sacrificed as a dead corpse to America. Joe Biden, that's what's happening there. They're totally spellbound. The Biden administration in the United States is totally bewitched by a demonic force, a take demonic gods. And that's also that's that's why they're opening up the border too. They want that archetype filling the United States. The United States is now headed is now in the same situation that you know Mexico or as the Aztec countries were as the, as the Aztec Empire fell. So you have this amazing situation, really, that's going into primal states. There's a primal kind of a Mesoamericana thing coming along. A primal toxic male thing happening in. And this is the beginning of the end. This is the end of it. it we're, like I said, if we can all stay alive, and there's a good chance that many of us will be dead before the spring. And that's why I want to get this stuff, because, it's, it's, uh, you know, any of us could be. And it's going to be a very harsh winter of the needle craft failing uh, people desperate to get anything to survive to so compromised immune systems from taking the needle craft a uh, desperate to survive at any cost and mass infections and lots of air ballooning in the the reason why like the reason why people are being you see what happens is you know going into a hospital and i was told this by an icu nurse from the nhs in england then in no circumstances go into the ICU with a, with a breathing problem because you're immediately put into an induced coma and stuck on the air balloon. Okay, the the the, the V E N T you know, the air balloon air balloon is what I call it. I get around the, the algorithms now, and the air balloon takes you to the next world. You're gone. It's like Carousel and Logan's Run. Now that's not because nurses and doctors in the ICU want to do this. They're following orders. It's given. It's been given to them directly by middle management within healthcare agencies. What's happened is, these bureaucrats and these middle management managers within healthcare agencies, like the all around the world, have been given vast amounts of money to buy ventilators, um, air balloons, right? And the air balloon are sitting in the ICUs. They have to justify them being used. So these. 
these dullard psychopath and proto psychopathic airheads in middle management and bureaucracy are ordering ICU staff to use them all the time, immediately put them into air balloon. Now, I was told this firsthand by a nurse, an ICU nurse in the UK. I've now heard that it's been left in comments on my videos in Scotland, it's also happening. And be sure it's happening where you are too. Do you remember that scene in the movie, The the Meaning of Life, where they go to the hospital and the guy's showing them the machines and he goes, what's the purpose of this machine? That's the machine that goes bing. Oh, brilliant, the machine that goes bing. Well, make sure it gets well used. Well, that's what's happening with Air Balloon. That's what, it's not the nurses and doctors are murdering people or anything like that. They're being forced through the bureau. See, our health, one of the reasons, the primary reasons why our healthcare systems are a catastrophe is because of all the middle managers who have been brought in the last few decades. It's all been middle management. There's more bureaucratic staff than there is actually frontline healthcare staff within hospitals these days. It's just how it is. And there's a, for every nurse, there's two administrative or middle management jobs and the same for doctors. That's just how it is. That's why there's been a vast exodus. And they're all, they're all, NPC dullards, these types, who just have no brains, no internal world, no internal monologue. They just bought loads of ventilators. They see them sitting there being empty and they say, why aren't the ventilators, be why aren't the air balloons being used to take people to the next world? And they're going, well, because we don't need them. You will need them. And that's what's happening there. Proto-psychopathic middle managers are, are telling the staff to do that. And it's, it's evil beyond words. But it's also that kind of mundane evil that gave us the Holocaust and gave us that purge. It's the mundane evil. It's not like, it's the classic, I'm just following orders. And they're not telling, they're not lying them. The NPCs are not lying, they're telling. We, we had air balloons in all the hospitals, we have to use them. So anyone came in saying, I'm a little bit out of breath, straight into an air balloon. Carousel of the other world. So that's why I'm really, you know, many of us, many of us will probably, a lot of us will probably die between now and the spring. And that includes, you know, me and everyone else, you know. So the thing is to stay alive till spring and it'll be over. This is the Battle of Berlin in many ways it's happening. And the the woke globalist NPC needlecraft factions are on their last they're on their last final assault. Remember it always remember what happened at the fall of Berlin? They went for the children. They went up to the children and said, put on a uniform. Now they're going up to the children and say, take needlecraft. When they, when they move in on the children, you know they're desperate. I do not for a minute believe any of the official numbers regarding how many have been needlecraft. I do not believe that it's at it all. If it was, if, if it, according to this country, we've already reached 90%. So we're at 90%, we have, the, we have the ideal number for herd immunity. You need to have a certain amount left over anyway. So, but are they stopping? No, they're going for the kids now. Now that tells me that they're nowhere near it. They were lying about it. They were lying about it. And they're lying about it everywhere. <clears throat> and the thing about the United States, what's interesting about the United States one is what Biden has done. Have you seen, have you actually seen what the thing says? It's actually much worse for US citizens than it is for any tourists or anyone coming even for a green card. US citizens are actually getting special, being like, like special like enforcement so you're a U.S. citizen, you're actually being treated worse where if, if for wanting to come back to your own country from abroad. But if you're somebody walking across the Mexican border with like cholera, typhoid, syphilis, HIV, God knows what else they picked up from the third world. Come on in. Now, that's Americans just don't want to accept that for lots of reasons, because they, they were the orange man bad thing has resulted in Biden being a kind of a Christ-like figure to them. So they can't, you can't go, and he's an old man and he's dying. So they see him as like a God or something. So they can't, he can't do anything wrong. Now, what was interesting yesterday was that Michal Martin, the Irish T prime minister, visited him. And then this, this order comes out of the blue. I'm starting to think now, Americans pay attention to this. Why would the President of the United States take an order from the Prime Minister of Ireland, a country that's nothing, right? On the surface, yes, I agree. Behind the surface, what Ireland is really run by two things, the Chinese Communist Party and biotech and big tech, so three things, right? But the biotech industry, Ireland and Israel are on the forefront of it. And who got most attacked? So, 
I quite possibly before he went to the United States, Michal Martin, the the diplomatic attaché attaché of Pfizer and Moderna in Ireland, went to the USA with a message from a, a boom, bang, bang, of the Chinese Communist Party to, to be given as an order to the US president saying, "I'll do this." Only let them. Only let people are flying to the United States be vaccinated, and the ones at the border flying over the border, just walking over the border, let them in, no problem. So that's what's happened. So this, the the, upside, the down thing of this now, which is colossal, but for me personally, I'll never, I'll never set foot this ever again. I'll never, I'll never. I mean, it's a country that's been very good to me that I absolutely love, and uh, I'm, 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 I've been intoxicated by the United States all my life, and I love the place and. I love American people and I love American culture, but because of this, this, this double, this fully needle craft thing, I'll never set foot in the United States ever again. I'll never be, I'll never, I'll never see the land of the United States ever again. And I find, I, I find that very sad and upsetting, because I'm, I'm an American file. I'm like I, I mean, I mean because and it's not, and you can't even take a test. You have to be, yeah, you have to take the test. Yeah, you have to be double needle crafted and the test to get in. And the test. And if you're an American, it's even worse. They want to monitor where you've been. It's unbelievable. And what are you doing? And people are sitting there taking this, except the testosterone, the toxic males in uh, toxic mas masculinity crowd in uh, in uh, Melbourne. So you know, it's it's you know, ugh, you know, unbelievable, unbelievable. Now, what's the answer out of this? Well, it's it's killing itself right now. It's it's actually killing itself at the moment. You can see now, you know, at the beginning of the the, the roller coaster ending was dying in Melbourne, you know, and 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 the bill is high now, you know, and the toxic the toxic masculinity, you know, uh, that coming to the fore, and that, that's that's the start of it because that was the first time anyone anywhere had said to the bureaucrats, no. No, in Ireland, the the so called marches were pro bureau. Pro, you know, they were, they were hello politicians. We love you. We love you politicians. Look at my yellow vest. We love you. A coward. I love you. We love you. That's what that's what happened. That's all that happened in Ireland. And let's go down to Bill and sing a few songs. Let's bring in issues that have nothing to do with it. climate change. Respect all the children. Oh, isn't it just like the water protest? But it was supposed to be the water protest, but somehow it ended up into something to do with Syrian refugees. But how did that happen? It doesn't matter. We had a family fun day out with face painting, and we're still fucking prisoners. Now, to see, that's the difference. And uh, the lovely autumnal feel at the moment, a really lu luscious autumnal feel. But that's always a good feeling. So think of those leaves falling from the trees and decaying as the end of the needlecraft world. The new. You know, the Branch Covidians and all that. Yeah, I know there's still much many lunatics out there as ever. But that was a state. The two things happened. The Melbourne up thing and then that earthquake. That earthquake was all of us. The, the hundreds of millions of us who said, this is bullshit. This is, we should be allowed to live our lives without having to be, having to be medicated to exist. And that was, a, that was all focused on Melbourne and that's what caused the earthquake in Melbourne. And that would have, and believe me, the, the, the 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 witch kings of the West, uh, even though they call themselves atheists and everything, and the CPC, according to you know the, the you know Chou Baicheng, the 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 Chinese premier of you know USA, uh, they would have they all the people around him, not him, he he doesn't even know if what if he's wearing underpants or not, but all around him, they would have all seen that too. They're not they're not stupid, in that sense, they understand magic and witch frighten them now that will frighten them they will think that you know it's at their primal animalistic level they're frightened and uh because the, not so much because of the 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 builders uprising that that would have annoyed them but when the earthquake happened they would have been, what made the earthquake happen now the th the dumb truthers as usual will try to destroy this by saying that was an earthquake weapon used and to attack melbourne but it wasn't because they, they wouldn't have been that concerned about it 
But the the earthquake was was this catalytic exteriorization phenomena, boom, sent by everybody in the world. You know, uh, we've all had that experience. It's all happened to all of us, where you've been in, you've been you've been highly agitated, or someone was in an extremely intense state, and a glass exploded, a mirror blew up, a mirror fragmented for no reason, a glass table exploded, or a glass exploded. That's catalytic exteriorization phenomena. That's so much pent up energy and anger and stress and frustration and it comes flying out of the solar plexus and it happened yesterday when boom right across the world into melbourne people were like oh thank god i want to help those people so you can't fly to melbourne and help the help the building workers and uh but you, you send your your catalytic exteriorization phenomenon your pent up frustration of the last 20 months boom went down to victoria and down to melbourne and that's what that was powerful shit this is why i'm a pagan that's an orgy we this is the fundamentals of paganism that human humans can alter reality and this is why the abrahamics and the, and the atheists took magic could say that magic was either evil or doesn't exist because the central point of paganism is you can use magic you can alter reality through your thoughts and uh which you know quantum theory completely you know agrees with so so here we are you know it's 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 the darkest before the dawn and all i can say is stay alive till the spring it is it's the darkest before the dawn uh, irish troops were had urban exercises in the pool bag area of dublin yesterday urban warfare exercise that's so they can murder irish people and you're saying Irish troops would never turn their guns on Irish people. Now we only had a civil war where they fucking killed three thousand of them. No, 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 they would never do it. No, they would because, but they 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 they'd put their weapons down and fight for Ireland. No, no, a soldier is an animal. You don't understand this. This is how you, all you people say these things like soldiers are. When they all go, you know, when what's his name Henry Kissinger went, military people are dumb idiots. Are dumb. A dumb whatever a, a, a dumb idiots to be used in foreign policy all the military all these people say that's that's disgraceful folks that's what it is that's what it is that's what you are i'm not putting you down as a person or anyone that has a career in soldiering but that's how that's your purpose in life to be disposed of a foreign policy you don't have they don't respect you at all they may give you you may give your wife a, a, a your purple heart or your you know your your your, your medal or, or talk about just the fallen but they, they they just used you and disposed of you. So these people are thinking that those Irish troops would turn their guns on the Irish people in a second. And the ones that they wouldn't, that, no, the ones that wouldn't would have their gun, maybe shot by their own side. This is what, this is what happens. They just, they just follow orders. They're order followers. And so they had an urban warfare exercise in Dublin. And what's weird about it, it's kind of creepy, is they had it in Poolbeg. And Poolbeg looks just like, you know, remember that movie Children of Men at the very end? Where they where they were trying to escape on the boat, and this is kind of like run down industrial area where there was all the different armies and the factions were fighting. Well, that's exactly what Poolbeg looks like. Uh, it's uncanny. It's like the final scene in Children of Men. Been de- deliberately kept. You know the the this power the huge power stations which are all closed down there years ago, but it's been deliberately kept in this kind of like in twentieth century nineteenth century industrial ruin for this kind of it's really weird how much it looked like it looks like the the final scene in children of men and here they all are full of troops practicing to have a go with the irish they'd never shoot their army nah, their army yeah their army and that's no denigration of people i mean <laughs> i mean just, let that just hope it never happens because you, you those want to say they would never use their guns on irish people now they would they wouldn't do it do you remember when they had the, the financial collapse in 2000 and, was it 12, 13, 2008, sorry. Uh, David, head of the unions in Ireland, wanted Irish troops at ATMs and outside banks in case there was a run on the banks. The head of the union, and then a union leader, you know, man, man of the people, wanted the machine gun beg, I was calling him after that. He was also on the board of the central bank. He wanted, you know, real working class type, you know. He wanted the Irish troops to machine gun Irish people in the streets if they made a run on the banks and uh, 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 this is their mentality this this is what this is this is this is your lead this is your union leaders and that's what they're like they're globalist that's all they care about 
All he cared about was protecting the banks and not anyone else. And the main reason he did is because his members in the middle class, in the in the in the unions, were guaranteed. They were see they were all ring fenced and protected from uh, the the recession. And the same so the same has happened with the with the Rona lockdown. They were all ring fenced all the government workers and protected them. And it's just and then we were told we're all in this together. Well, that happened in, in Victoria as well. And then they said, we're all in this together until you found out one group said, no, we're not. And then they found that they weren't in it together, the builders. So it's just the darkest before the dawn type thing. But it's very cosmic, powerful things. Jupiter was with a massive object the other day. There's something going on. They're, they're constantly talking about asteroids and everything. The, 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 the establishment are looking up at the skies in terror. I would love to be in the Vatican Observatory right now and see what they're talking about. They're, they're, they're looking at the skies in terror, just like, and then they're sacrificing as many humans as they can to the sun god and sun demons in order to, by getting them needlecrafted into airplanes where they can have, you know, thrombosis and clots. And, well, they're up in the sky. And, yeah, I mean, it, they're, they're terrified of something. They know the end is coming now. They, they, so, so, and they're desperately trying to offset him. There's, like, you could throw all kinds of weird theories in there. The world died, like, so many years ago. And we're just living in the fragments of memories of it. And uh, it, that's why nothing makes sense anymore. That we're living in a kind of fragmented aftershock of a world that's already dead. I mean, in terms of reality, I mean, in that sense. So, uh, it's going to get real interesting, I think, between now and the spring. But it's also going to be, you know, that's that's... That's what I want from the tribe. The tribe is not to get involved. The tribe's job is to stay alive, because I don't. I I I don't. Would never sacrifice people for war to die. I want them alive, because people like when I say the tribe, I don't think people, are, my friends, don't think about like all of us who see this things as they are. You've got to throw away your prejudices, and you've got to understand that authority is not your friend not not at all and that includes this uh, monotheistic god in the sky it's not uh, you you the only thing i can save you now is is to stay alive well not the only thing i mean this will well, we'll survive somehow but we all have to stay alive till the spring we all have to do that because we, I, we need the world needs people like us who can think for ourselves and i've been very you know, I've, I've decided, like, unfortunately, people in the alternative scene are as closed-minded and as frightened and as terrified as people in the mainstream. They just are. You know, they replace, you know, they replace, like, you know, people in, in, the, main, in, the, in, in the mainstream are terrified of, well, they, they mock and are terrified of someone like David. In the alternative, a mock are terrified of someone like Marina Abramovich. I mean, you've got to stop being on all your fears in either way. And I, I really like, I, I mean, Marina Pramovic, I mean, you know, you hear my old spirit cooking and she boils and cooks babies and all those bollocks and without any proof. It's like the Crowley thing, you know. And then you actually go listen to this woman talk across as quite a beautiful soul and quite a brilliant person. And, but you know, people want their simple childlike little view of the world mauling their rosary beads and like I'm on the good side and there's the bad side out there I'm, I'm not on the bad side you know this kind of thing dogma is horrible friends my friends dogma is a horrible stay well away from dogma so uh, where do I think Melbourne will go I think it'll peter out I don't think it'll go anywhere major I don't think it'll spread to other cities but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's what the same thing happened with solidarity in Gdansk in Poland. It only have to happen in one city. And it what it does, it plants a seed in, in other people who slowly walk away from the and that's what happened. They would have been they would have been terrified yesterday, the establishment or what was going on and because they knew that the, that was a seed that was being planted in, in the consciousness of people that will switch that version of reality off. And that's why Biden suddenly signed the law out of blue after this courier from the Chinese Communist Party courier had brought the message to him from, from Dublin. And he, to um, they took their orders from Pang Tong Tong, or his name is, in someone in Beijing or somewhere. And uh, 
What a world, eh? What a fucking world. I mean, United States citizens cannot come into the US now unless they've been double needle crafted against a virus that has a 99% survival rate. 99% survival rate. They can't get into an airplane and fly to the United States. Yet they put themselves at extreme risk of thrombosis and blood clotting by getting onto the airplane with those double the, the double needle craft and being sacrificed. But this, the, it's all archetypes and it's all subconscious workings going on. We are living in an age of magic, my friends. And the thing is to survive this ritual, to survive this operation, to survive this working. Because this is reality. This is reality, I don't know, quantum magic in operation. All this messing around in with quantum computers and playing with reality and gene splicing and go, it goes on with these tech companies. It's tearing reality asunder. And it's, maybe it's supposed to happen. But it's tearing reality asunder. It really is. And we're, you know, there's just days. Yeah, I had a bad day yesterday, but there's other days I'm amazed at what I'm seeing. That's what today I feel like. I feel like I'm amazed by what I'm seeing. It's like the greatest show on earth at times. But I think, yeah, it'll peter out in Melbourne. Something will happen. A cop will die, or some pregnant woman will be hit by a car and die, and they'll try to blame. They'll do the usual. They'll blame the uh, the, the toxic masculines, but it won't. They won't. It won't matter to them. You see, if you want proof that we live in a world of sorcery and magic, before this all began, the whole world was captivated by a man in the United States who was killed by a police officer and his last words were, I can't breathe. And today, many people all over the world, their last ever words they ever say to their family members or anyone is, I can't breathe. And you tell me we weren't hexed or we weren't thrown into a world of quantum magic or chaos magic. Hold fast to that which is true and I'll see you in the spring. <laughs>